All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the round 19 edition of Just the Tips. I'm joined once again by Druzy. Druzy, how did you go in tipping last week? Yeah, did some good tipping. Got, had a threesome. So, I mean, what? I uh, got seven <laughs> tips this, <laughs> this week, Jesse. Got the uh, Richmond game wrong and Carlton Collingwood. Yep, I got the same as you, except one less. Um, so I got, <laughs> I got six. Uh, I tipped St Kilda in that 50-50 and they were leading. Um, and then they let me down. But it's probably a good thing in the context of the finals race. Uh, mm. St Kilda dropping that game, so not too mad. That takes you to a grand total of 103. So you're on the edge of the top 50 in this footy tipping competition at 51st. <laughs> and I'm right behind you in uh, 475th. So really not... <laughs> that far behind uh, with a total score of 90. Uh, Dad, I think, got 7 as well this week, so he moves up to 101, uh, back in the top 100, 93rd. We will shout out the winner of this week's round. It was Leo the Lion with a perfect 9, uh, and the, the margin of 41, so obviously which long absolutely battering your side into oblivion. Uh, the, the Most of the margins were a fair way off this week. Uh, so well done, Leo the Lion. And the overall tipping leader is Ned Ryan, 04, with 110. So 20 tips ahead of me. That hurts. That's more than one per round he's beaten me. Congratulations. And once again, Jeremy Willen leads the fantasy competition with his team Willen and Dillon with a score of 20.45 on average per week. So that is absolutely elite. Uh, once again, I, th I think I'm about 110th in that league. So, uh, yeah, absolutely killing it. Right, we will give out a shout out. We don't do bloke of the week on this show. That's your show, uh, Drew Footy Show. Go check out Drewzy's channel for that. But I do want to give a massive shout out to Max Fairclough. I don't know if you sell this, Drew, uh, Drewzy, but for the second time in 12 months, he dropped $150 in donations on oh, the live stream, mate. which is absolutely enormous. So you are the bloke of the week. Yes, he along with our sponsors of today's video, Manscaped. Uh, <laughs> he, he's giving them a run for their money. I might, uh, I might be like, hey. I got this other sponsor, Max, uh, really driving up the revenue. Uh, so thank you so much, Max. Uh, you're an absolute star. But the actual sponsors of today's video, of course, manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping on their elite male grooming products, go to manscaped.com and use the code TRUE4020, all caps, all one word. Druzy, uh, the other day I heard weird vibrating in my bathroom and I was like, ooh, which, one, which device is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I walked in and uh, it turns out I'd left my uh, the actual Manscaped uh, ball trimmer, shaver. the ball shaver, uh, I'd left it on. Yeah. So and it was going, and it must have been going for well over an hour. And that's the impressive part about this product: <laughs> you get 90-minute battery runtime. So um, oh, kick back, watch a game of soccer, shave your nuts, uh, join in the live stream as well. That goes for a couple of hours, and you'll you'll be able to shave your body hair for most of that. So nice. get around it, guys. Link in the description. Shave until you're in your grave with Manscaped. Shave until the grave. All right, it's time to take a look at the uh, round 19 fixtures, Drewsy. This might be a bit of a shambles. This video, we will say at this point in time. Uh, the fixture is set to change, so um, it's going to be it's going to be tough to um, nominate winners for all of this. For instance, I think the Bulldogs Adelaide game might be changed to the Bulldogs Melbourne. So we will get into that a little bit later. Um, but there's implications around that. Then Gold Coast and Adelaide, the two teams left out. Gold Coast and Adelaide have already played, so we could see a real fixture shake up. But at the moment, all we can do is tip the games that are ahead of us. So we'll start off with Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide versus Collingwood at Adelaide Oval. Uh, obviously, we just mentioned the Port overcame a pretty gritty contest against the Saints. I think you mentioned on the Drew Footy Show they have a number of outs, um, particularly some young gun players. You, I think Dersma, Butters, and Rosie are they yeah. all out at the moment? Yeah, and then you know a, a host of other important players. But George Yardis stepped up, kick four. Um, not completely out of the race for maybe a top five rising star finish yeah. if he has a good end of the season. And Wines and particularly Carl Amon's really impressive mm. me at the moment. Consistent in my fantasy team. I think he got about 131. On the other side, you have Collingwood who uh, has to be say really disappointed with their loss to Carlton, a team that's in their eyes probably they see them as you know certainly beatable they've beaten yeah. them earlier this year uh, and then you know not too far ahead of them on the ladder this was a winnable game and they coughed up a fairly big lead even though Dekoe had 31 he's continuing his good form uh, but they really fell apart and uh, it's a really deflating loss compounded by a concussion to Josh Thomas so he will be unavailable for this game it was a one point margin earlier this year uh, other, is this a simple tip do you think? Uh yeah, I think most people will tip Port Adelaide and rightly so. I'm going to tip Port to win this one. Probably about five, four to five goals. Uh, Oliver Henry for the, mm. the Magpies had his best game on the weekend at AFL level. Kicked three. Brother of Jack Henry. And uh, yeah, they're both good, hungry players. I like them a lot. <laughs> yep, you mentioned George Yardis. He's getting better every week. Last week, sat on Max Gorn's head, then played football. And then this week, kicked four goals. So uh, he's, he's been very impressive. 
And yeah, Port have taken a big hit this season with injuries. So they're, they're doing well to sneak into the four. I think they'll stay in the four this week with a win at home against the Pies. Yep, anything but a dead rubber coming into the final portion of the season with the Lions slipping out of the four. I think Port will make no mistake here and win by five goals. The second game of the round is Sydney versus Fremantle. Uh, at this point, fixtured for GMHBA, a ground that Sydney obviously have no issue with clapping WA teams. Sydney also had a bit of COVID drama with a few uh, laid outs, um, in particular Callum Mills with prior to that Sydney derby, but didn't slow them down. Kennedy and Parker were great in the middle, um, and then you had, you know, Buddy kick four, and uh, I think Papley played really well yeah. as well. They, they looked really good after, you know, conceding a five-goal lead. Fremantle on the other side of the ledger um, played really well to only lose by 69 points in wet weather <laughs> conditions. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, handed a bit of a football lesson that hopefully they can learn from. Maybe we said on your show that uh, it looked like Geelong were playing in dry conditions and Fremantle yeah. were playing in wet conditions and wasn't conducive to Fremantle making a good fist of it. The Dockers probably need almost to win this to stay in the hunt for the eight. Can they do it? Yeah, well, we've beaten them our last two times. Beat them earlier in the season. That's when Sydney were going through that sort of form a slump. It was probably the worst period of their season. Frio got them, beat them just narrowly by, what, like two points or something mm-hmm. in the end, something like that. So uh, we've beaten them this season, so we can obviously do it again. I reckon Hayden Young could be back in this week, which is very exciting. One of my favourite players on our list, because when he's on, he's hot. And yeah, we beat Sydney last season as well. So head-to-head... Freo can stack up against Sydney, but with the form Sydney are in at the moment, away from home, it's going to be very hard for the Dockers to get a result. I've tipped Sydney for this one. They'll probably get it done by... Oh, Fremantle don't lose close games. They, they'll just, like, win by any margin or get pumped. Uh, we'll probably get pumped here. I'll, I'll go Sydney by five goals. Yeah, I'm thinking along similar lines. Uh, Swans are really, really good at the moment. Obviously, still plenty to play for. Not out of the top four race themselves, uh, depending on other results as well. So, I think Sydney will win by 38. In the thick of the Premiership race as well. But go the Darkers! The next game is Hawthorne hosting the Brisbane Lions at the MCG. Uh, Hawks were really good last week. Um, mm. We watched on Saturday night as they drew with Melbourne. Um, had their opportunities to win. Well, both sides did, obviously. Um, Bruce kicked a goal uh, with about a minute to go. Maybe less mm. uh, to tie the scores. And um, I think it was almost as good as a win for them in the context of uh, a developing side that can take it up to good sides and they'll have to do that again I thought Tom Mitchell was really good I know he's a good good player but I just thought he was quite important in um Hawthorne sort of wrestling momentum at key stages of the game. The Lions on the other side have dropped two in a row they lost to St Kilda then they lost to Richmond um losing to Richmond is not you know shameful but uh in the context of you know dropping two games at this crucial part of the season I think they're in a slump they're not playing well Mm. uh Hitwood's obviously out um mind you I think you know, with guys like Bailey um, and Danaher and Cameron, they've still got avenues to go, yep, but it would be interesting to see, you know, how, how that affects them structurally. They're not a good MCG side. I, mm. In fact, I was just saying to you, I could be wrong, let me know in the comments, but have Brisbane won at the G since they've come good in 2019? I recall losses to Essendon, Hawthorne and Richmond, and I, I don't really recall after that. So let us know, but either way, I think fair to say, not mm. the best MCG side. Is there a chance of an upset here? Yeah, this, if we still did the upset of the week, this would be one of them. <laughs> yeah, we do upset of the week. This, yeah. is, this is the upset of the week. This is the upset of the week. I'm going to tip Brisbane because they are a better side than Hawthorne. But yeah, Hawthorne, they're, they're one of those sides that are hot and cold week in, week out. They're getting flogged against Frio. Who, who gets flogged against Frio? No one. And then taking it up to the top side in the comp. So they're capable to win this game. But I reckon Brisbane need to get this win because they've lost two in a row to sides which they probably could have competed a bit better with for four quarters. Against Hawthorne, they should get the job done. Come on, Brisbane. Are you contenders or pretenders? Win this game for me. I'm tipping you, and I'll tip you to win by 22 points. I think they're contenders, not pretenders. I think they're a very, very good side. Uh, But this form slump's come at a bad time, and it could cost them top four, and that makes them not a realistic flag chance. You know what? With the tipping the way it is, I am in no position to tip conservatively. I'm going to tip the upset here. I'm going to say Hawthorne upset the Lions. I'm expecting anything, but, um, you know, Hawthorne... Yeah, do it for me, please. I need it. (laughs) The next game is Essendon hosting the GWS Giants, currently at Marvel. Uh, I think we can expect it probably will stay at Marvel, but who knows at this stage. Um, This is one of those games that's going to shape the top eight, uh, particularly that lower half of the top eight, with uh, the Dons and the Giants obviously competing for what is hopefully eighth spot for them. Uh, Essendon overcame a pretty plucky North Melbourne. We were Mm. complimenting the way North played. Uh, They've had a good stretch, but uh, Essendon... Uh, had a mature performance, ultimately came away with the chocolates. Peter Wright kicked three goals. I think, I think that might be the equal most he's ever kicked, if not the most. Yeah. Um, so it's good for him as a young player to sort of start and to establish himself. I know he's not that young, but um, yeah, still 
you'd think his peak is ahead of him. Yeah. Um, and then Stringer as well, and fantastic. Um, in addition to Parrish and Merritt, also you know just playing well like they do every week. The Giants uh, had a five goal lead despite um, some outs with you know Toby Green missing due to isolation. It was a bit of a weird derby up there at uh, Metricon. They yeah. got five goals ahead and then got steamrolled by a uh, far superior side. I think we have to say in the Sydney Swans. The Giants though. They're Jekyll and Hyde. We've seen them at their best and they're fantastic. We've seen them at their worst and they've dropped really, you know, winnable games. Uh, this is exactly the sort of game where everyone tips against them and they win. So how do you think this one will go? Yeah, not sure. GWS won this fixture earlier on in the season. They're going to be without Josh Kelly for this one, I reckon. Essendon play, like, pretty exciting footy. I do like watching the Bombers play. But I just feel like, I was saying to Jesse before, whichever team I tip, I'll, I just feel like I'll get this one wrong. I can make a case for both sides. But I think GWS's best is better than Essendon's. They just can't seem to get it out most weeks, just like Bush on a Saturday night. Um, <laughs> oh, he still gets it out. Yeah, I reckon I'm, I'm going to tip GWS this week. They, they show up every couple of weeks. Um, they showed up in the first half against Sydney, couldn't get it done. I'm going to tip GWS. I'm going to say by three goals. Yeah, I agree that this is the sort of game that they win. Um, so I, I see the temptation. But just because you're tipping the Giants, I'm going to tip the Dons. Nice. Uh, you know, they haven't really given us too much reason to think they uh, they will lose games that they will, I, I would say, probably going to be favourites in this game. So uh, Essendon, this is a new Essendon. And I think they'll win by 14 points. Next up, we have West Coast versus St Kilda on Saturday night at Optus Stadium. The Eagles coming off a much improved performance against the Crows, who were no easy beats. I thought they, uh, they played with a good spirit. But the Eagles, uh, I think most importantly, worked out their ball movement issues were much more aggressive, much better in the contest. Jamie Cripps had 25 and 5 goals, one of the better games of his career, no doubt. Uh, St Kilda on the other side snapped a three-game winning streak with a um, somewhat average loss to Port Adelaide side that's undermanned, although they had plenty to play for. But uh, St Kilda, that would have been a really good opportunity to really put a lot of pressure on that top eight race. I think it was a good game from the Saints. So they put up a good fight. fight. Port was really good. I don't think it was a... A disappointing result, even though they didn't really kick straight in front of goal. Uh, I think they played with a good intensity. Hmm. I suppose when you start the season so poorly, though, you kind of put yourself under pressure to win these kind of games. Yeah. Um, so I, I suppose it's forgivable. They had some really good performances from, uh, obviously, Steele was fantastic. Steele and Crouch had 73 disposals between them, and I thought Hill and Dunstan actually played quite well hmm. as well. Shuey's probably out for this game, I think. He did a calf late in the game. Um, might be available, might not. Um, either way, uh, who do you think will win this Crucial pre-finals clash. West Coast. I'm going to back your fellas in. That makes me nervous. I feel like you sh you're shit at tipping us. Yeah. No, I, I really am. But I, I said it to you before filming. You can't back shit sides when you're tipping. And I don't think <laughs> St. Kilda are a St. Kilda. I do, but th they've just been so unreliable this season. Like, I can't put my faith off my tip in St. Kilda's hands. <laughs> I was pretty impressed with West Coast's response this week. Not that I'm going to toot your trumpet too much because I can't stand you. I'll, I'll back your boys in this week. Uh, this might be the round we go most different because I'm thinking St. Kilda win this game, to be honest. I think St. Kilda uh, showed a real improvement on their start of the season. The last four weeks have been good uh, despite the loss to Port Adelaide. Uh, I just think they're going to win. I'm going to tip the Saints by 18 points. The second grand final rematch is next with Geelong hosting Richmond at the MCG. I think they did ask to get this game moved to GMHBA and the AFL rejected it. Um, don't really know why. It's Geelong's home strange. game and there's no crowd here that I would imagine. So, um, yeah, either way. I, Reason I, to be salty if you're a Geelong supporter. Yeah, I think hey. that's a little bit. They played the last game at the G. They, they give up home games for the crowd. Do you know what I mean? Like they yeah. just say, okay, we'll make more money. We'll go to the G. But there's no reason for that now. So that's ridiculous. Unless it's a contractual thing, I don't know. But anyway, Geelong uh, obviously gave the Dockers a football lesson in the wet, as we uh, as we already discussed. But Hawthorne's kick, uh, Hawkins kicked forward. Danger having a little bit of a, a purple patch now. Three goals yeah. and 22 possessions might be just coming into some form pre-finals, which is uh, an ominous sign for the rest of the competition. If he starts firing, um, Geelong are even better, uh, which is wild. Richmond were obviously very good against Brisbane. Um, yeah. Some good ins back in, I think. As soon as I saw Nan Curvis and Lambert were back in, I was like, ooh. I think that does change the dynamic. Um, and we do know that Dusty's out for the rest of the year now, but... Um, they played really quite well, much more like the Richmond brand. Toll had four, Rewald had six, a lot of firepower in that side. Last time they met, the Cats won by 11 goals, with no Cameron or Dusty here, two superstars. Um, how do you see this particular fixture? Yeah, that first game was weird, because the first half was pretty evenly matched, and then Geelong just turned on the Jets. They can do that so well, Geelong. When I spoke to Caden last week on the Drew Footy Show, he said that Geelong can walk in goals, and it just makes so much sense. Like, they can just flick a switch and score at will. Against Frio, scoring from turnovers, I was meant to mention this on the Drew Footy Show, but I suck. Every time Frio turned the ball over, it was 
in Geelong's goal, like yeah. within ten seconds. Like yeah. they just sling the ball back the other way so quickly. They're probably my favourite for the flag. I predicted them to win the flag earlier in the season, but you know I tipped Richmond earlier in the season for this fixture. And now I feel like just the way that the season's going, Richmond will probably win this. But I'm going to tip Geelong. I think Geelong are probably the most informed side in the comp with Sydney at the moment. I'll tip the Cats to win this one. Richmond, hopefully the, the better side shows up like we saw last week. It's going to be hard without Dusty. Geelong are informed. I'll tip them to win this by 29. Yeah, I think uh, it would take a performance from Richmond that we haven't seen this year. Yeah. But their best this year hasn't proven that they can beat Geelong, uh, which doesn't mean that they won't win because we know, obviously, what Richmond are capable of, particularly late in the seasons, but there's no reason to tip against Geelong here, I think. No. I th- I'm going to agree, Geelong win by 25. The next game is Carlton versus North Melbourne. Don't say Clash of the Titans. Don't say Clash of the Titans. I can't, I can't make a possible joke about North Melbourne for the rest of the year, <laughs> yeah. at least. So, uh, but no, Carlton versus North Melbourne at Marvel. This is uh, actually potentially a pretty good game. Uh, Carlton obviously coming off a win last week uh, against Collingwood. Uh, overran them one by five goals. Sam Walsh, it was the Sam Walsh show. Uh, for yet another week, he also kicks an amazing goal to make the highlights real. In addition to, what, 39 possessions or something like that. Yeah. Probably got three votes. Matthew Kennedy's also bobbed up again. 26 touches and a goal. Um, he's one they've highlighted before. is sort of stepping up a little bit um, in the absence of guys like Cripps, who's um, out at the moment. North continued some improved form. Took it up to Essendon, a side that can rightfully uh, see themselves as worthy of a top eight spot this year. Um, and they did so without Ben Cunnington, who, who didn't fly as well to Queensland. So... With the form North's in, I actually think there's a, they've got a chance here. How do you see this game Yeah, going? I know what you mean. I just don't think Colton will drop this one. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> no, but North are good. They'll probably compete for like two and a half, three quarters, and then just fall off. Mm. Um, but yeah, Colton, in hindsight, that game against Geelong, seeing how Freo went against Geelong compared to how Colton went against Geelong, they sort of ran with them the whole game, just couldn't put it on the scoreboard. I think they're, they're in decent form. They're, they're finding their feet this season. Finally, I don't think they'll make finals, but they'll have a good run in for the rest of the season. I think they've got some easy games. This is one of them. I reckon they'll win this one. Been enjoying watching North Melbourne, though. Taron Thomas, I've been liking to watch. Nick Larkey, Cam Zerha, the ball. He, that's exactly what he is, isn't he? He just crashes packs, digs the ball out of packs, and kicks nice goals. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been liking watching the Roos. So this could be an interesting game, but I reckon the Blues will beat the Roos. Comparatively, I have not enjoyed watching North <laughs> Melbourne. Uh, they, they can definitely win this game, but... Yeah, I agree. The Carlton, uh, I feel more confident in now um, over their last you know month or so. In fact, yeah, they've shown a pattern this year where they generally win the games you'd expect them yeah. to win. North are not playing like a bottom side at the moment, so I think the gap's not that big, but I think you have to go Carlton here by yeah. 14 points. It'll be a good game. All right, we're up to the final two games of the round. The reason I've left these to the end is because these might get shuffled around um, and completely mixed around. So yeah. um, I don't think we need to... Do a deep dive of these games. Um, should we just quick fire say who do we think would win between the Dogs and Adelaide? We've, Adelaide. We've, <laughs> we've talked about um, <laughs> we talked about uh, the last week on the Drew Footy Show. So if you want some team focused analysis, go to Drewsy Show. Analysis. Um, Bulldogs and Adelaide at Mars. Yeah, I think there's not really too much of a case we need to make for the for the Dogs to win this. Um, what about Gold Coast hosting Melbourne? Currently in Darwin, but. It's truly with the border situation as well, that game can't end up in Darwin if it does go ahead. Yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? No. No, yeah, Melbourne will win that, and the Dogs will win the other one. Okay, let's flip the script now, because it looks like the Dogs are playing the D, so we can talk a little bit about this, um, uh, and we'll just have to leave Adelaide and Gold Coast, because they they might be playing... They can't play each other, I don't think. Haven't so. they only played once this season? They have, but it's, they've already fixtured the rest of the season they don't play again that's so, a bit silly though because they finished like similar spots on the ladder last year yeah. it makes sense to play that uh, it does but then you'd have to change yeah more everything so yeah. Um, let's just say let's little, do a little preview of the dogs and D's um, the, okay we can talk about it. the dogs last week uh, yeah. they beat Gold Coast in um, what was a pretty good contest from the Suns playing some improved form but um, the dogs obviously uh, I think Dunkley's going to miss this game due to having to isolate um, got a few players out um, unavailable but Uwe Hagen on the plus side came in and kicked three goals for them. Mm. It was really good. Uh, I think Smith came in and played in the guts. They rested Liberatore. Yeah. And Smith came in, had 33 touches, nine clearances or something stupid. Um, although Liberatore probably comes back in, I'd imagine. With Melbourne, we saw that they dropped some valuable points against the Hawks. And we were talking about it. This team's good enough to win um, against anyone, I would say. But they just have some lapses against sides they should beat. This is obviously potentially a grand final preview. So I'd imagine Melbourne will bring their A game. Yeah. How do you see this going? Let's just say it's at the G. Alright, at the G, the D's get it done. No, I think the D's will get this game uh, wrapped up like Christmas anyway, because every time they've had their backs against the wall this season, they've responded. And just going off that last game, 
uh, between these two sides that we live streamed on your channel a few months back. Uh, the Dogs just had, had nothing for Melbourne. Melbourne had the answer to everything. And I reckon, yeah, I think Melbourne like their chances against the Dogs. So I, I'll, if this game goes ahead, I'll be tipping Melbourne. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm going to say that the Ds have earned favouritism because of what happened in the previous game. Um, the MCG is obviously more of a home ground. I presume that's where this game's going to be played because I think they're just bringing forward next week's game. This game was originally next week. Yeah, okay. I was actually going to go to it and then the COVID situation happened. Um, oh, rats. So that's stinky. Uh, but the Ds, I think, like, they've lapsed against average teams and then they've, they've generally, you know... Pulled the lever and, you know, no pun intended, with Jake. <laughs> um, and they've gone up, you know, a couple of gears and, in my opinion, have played the best football at their best this year. So I'm going to say they'll win. But obviously anything's possible in this game. They're two very good sides. All right, guys, that just about wraps up our tips for another week. Um, sorry about the scrambled edition this week. Uh, like my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are fertilized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I'm going to tell you as well, by the way. <laughs> 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 it's not like that. <laughs> Should I leave that in? You just fuck with yeah, it? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> just fuck with <laughs> it. <laughs> a fertilised eggs. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously the COVID situation at the moment means the fish is going to be scrambled mm. and I uh, I can't... We, we filmed this on a Monday, okay, and I, I work, so I, I hopefully... Um, Hopefully it doesn't get too butchered, but I appreciate you watching. I uh, appreciate subscribing if you haven't already. Like the video if you can. You go check out the Drew Footy Show, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one, guys. 